let's say you don't come for your masters would you be happy doing whatever it is that you are doing one year down the line and that should give you an answer I did my bachelor's in electronic and communication engineering from NIT Raoulkela at San Odessa. Uh, after that, I had been working for uh, four to five years as a software developer, and then I decided to switch tracks and I went for my master's uh, in HCI Human Computer Interaction. Um, it was at Carnegie Mellon, uh, like University in Pittsburgh. and after that i got an opportunity to join amazon as a design technologist uh, it's a role in the field of ux and i have been here since so hci courses typically you would have the pick of the courses from a bit of from psychology bit from design a bit from engineering and all of them will be in um, curated in a way that you can apply the ux process and learn much more about user experience any background to be honest uh my cohort was uh, so i mean what was the best word to use it um i would say my cohort was like multifaceted in a way we had students from engineering we had students from design we had students from art degrees we had students who were lawyers we had uh, uh, like uh, some of our students were uh, uh, in the food and wine in the industry and and also even um, so that covers the breadth of the courses and then as far as age is concerned we had students who were fresh out of college to people who had been in the industry for 10 to 12 years I think my GRE was 326, 28 or something. I don't remember it. Uh, and uh, I think my TOEFL was around 108 or something. Carnegie Mellon University is a private university, if I'm right, and it doesn't. Uh, at least I didn't get any scholarship. There was no scope. I would have loved one for sure. I applied to the one year program at Carnegie Mellon which I joined uh, apart from it there were two courses at University of Washington which I applied uh, one was an 11 month the other was an 18 month and the last two that I applied was everyone applies to Georgia Tech Georgia Tech has an amazing course if you are fresh out of college you sh- I would I would recommend that to everyone because you get a lot more time to prepare yourself and the last one that I applied was to uh, Cornell So I had planned a better on when I wanted to apply. I got my GRE and TOEFL out of the way one one and a half years before when I had plenty of time, and uh, then I I was chilling out un- uh, until the admission season. I started shortlisting universities around uh, I guess June and July, and then I I wa- uh, then I took a break of sorts. And um, once all of what was done, the first thing that you need. I wanted to focus on what the SOP, and uh, I started that around the month of September, I guess, and I worked backward from whatever university required the longest SOP. Once you have everything, you can cut it down in a way, right? And uh, the I think the SOP was the most important and the, and probably the longest uh, uh, phase of all of it, which I took my sweet time. To be honest, people can do it much faster. Three months around that, and then the other parts of the application process uh, was just a month. That was all in the month around uh, in the month of November and December. Um, Georgia Tech responded within 15 days or something, which was which blew my mind to be honest. Um, but uh, uh, the other one probably they took around two or three months. I have had chat with multiple folks after I joined who have asked me about some advice and the only thing which I have told them is you don't need to worry about SOP you need to figure out what structure you want you know how you decide uh, the book index and all what what you want to say and once you decide that it's all about you so it's quite easy to do that once you know the structure i think the biggest obstacle to SOP is people fretting about what the structure is supposed to be which in turn what i found is 
everyone is trying to do the same thing and we also sort of don't account for the fact that the people who sit in the admission committees they are masters you just have to tell them pretty straightforward this is who i am this is what i want to do this is what i think i have done in the past and it is all about and it's plain sailing after that yeah, as i was saying the structure is what people fret about but and it's not very well documented out there <laughs> I had worked for a while so I had a bit of savings because I knew that I was going to do my masters that being said it was the option that I went for was probably the most expensive that I had ever come across um my course fees alone it was a one year course but for even one year it was close to $75000 just in plain tuition and add to that your living expenses and everything that was again close to if you are living in a city like Pittsburgh um and all so uh, close to like 15 to 20 is what you should assume in for your house rent and everything and you can do it you can do all of it within 10 you can do all of it within 50 it is your choice how you want to live your life i took a loan um for my tuition fees uh, which was around 75 or something 75k um and then um the rest uh, uh, i used whatever my savings uh, were for my four and four or five years of working uh, in the industry um and uh, yeah the total cost in i guess translates to somewhere comes to around 60 65 lakhs or something so if you're fresh out of college you should probably be looking for a two-year course so that it gets you into the rhythm of master. A master's is not the same as an undergraduation course. It, it is definitely a step up. Even for US students, I feel that they feel uh, the pressure, uh, which is a welcome pressure, to be honest. You are not doing master for the heck of it. You are trying to make a career out of it. So you have, if you're fresh out of college, you're fresh out of undergrad, I know how my undergrad was. So definitely if I was going for a master's then I would have chosen a two years course if I had the right mindset, I guess. It would have given me time to work through, pace myself and uh, go for an internship as well, which allows me to prove my mettle to a future prospective employer. Now, if you move to the other part, if you have a bit of experience and all, uh, then what you can do is you can probably choose a one and a half year thing, which is probably the norm among everyone. The biggest benefit that you get out of that is not more around the pacing, but around the internship. You, uh, you get a bit of time preparing, you get a bit of time to know what the job market is all about. And yeah, you get, uh, you, uh, get a lot more time to network. Uh, if you are in a university like Carnegie Mellon, I don't think you need to make dinner any day. There is always free pizza available somewhere on the campus. Someone is having some event, so food-wise you are covered in a way. Um, the uh, university environment was amazing, to be honest. People were amazing. My cohort is probably the best part about uh, my whole journey uh, over uh, there. Um, I think. Uh, it was a very multicultural cohort. I think we celebrated uh, New Year's Day, like Lunar Day. We had a Diwali celebration, a Holi celebration. We had soccer matches and all. And all of that is after you would get done with the assignments and all that. Yeah, I have I have had the opportunity to talk to many stu uh, many prospective students. Also, some from through the platform of Yorkit, and I feel that. Every once in a while, because of everything around you, everyone needs an arm around that shoulder in a way. They just need to be told that they can do it. And everyone asks me, hey, should I do it? Should I go for my master's? Should I do it? Is, uh, I mean, things are so difficult. What ifs and all that. So I realized very late that I cannot, I cannot make me answering them is not helping them. They need to answer that question for themselves, to be honest, you know. So I just speak from my experience and at the end of the day, if they are still not being able to decide, I just ask them, okay, let's say you don't come for your masters. Would you be happy doing whatever it is that you are doing one year down the line? And that should give you an answer of if you want to come for your, if you want to do your masters or you want to do something else. That's as, that's as simple a question that anyone can ask themselves while deciding. Thank mm -hmm. you.